Okay, so in this uh, video, we'll talk about a prototyping uh, platform uh, called a breadboard. Uh, why is it called a breadboard? Most likely because it looks like these holes look like uh, holes on a plain white bread. Uh, that's most likely why. So uh, this breadboard basically helps us put electrical components and wire them up a little easier. Uh, so the breadboard has two rails buses. So this bus right here is uh, vertically connected. So these holes right here uh, are internally connected. So the basic idea behind a breadboard, and I'll show you. So here's an example of a similar breadboard. I'm going to turn the back of it, and I'm going to take, peel over some of the plastic casing real quick. What you'll see in the case of the vertical one, so uh, so I'm going to peel up and look at what's here, right here behind these holes. So this red line or this outermost holes are vertically connected internally. The next column right here, the black, uh, this black line sig signified by the black line or the minus line are also internally connected vertically. And how's that happening? If I peel up the back side of that particular breadboard, what you'll see is a wire that runs straight down internally connecting these holes. So this wire right now, actually if I pull this out, you'll be able to see that these holes basically accept small electrical connections or wires like these inside that hole. So when I place a wire right here, for example, that resistor right there is connected there, and I have a red wire connected to this, what I have done is basically made a connection between this red wire and this end of that electrical component called the resistor because the internal on the back side, you see this big power uh, rail connecting these guys. Okay, so that's what the breadboard is useful for. So we're not trying to push these two. We don't have to try to push uh, these two uh, connections uh, there. So we're not trying to push the same two components. If we need to connect them, we don't have to push them all in the same hole. We can basically take advantage of the fact that these are internally connected. So. The breadboard typically has power rails like these, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. Uh, the power rails are connected right here. These power rails are connected right here, but this plus power rail is not connected to this plus power rail, so if I needed to connect them, I would basically put a wire right here, and I would put another end of that wire, so a total wire right here. So these two buses are now connected. So if I now have uh, one end of a component right there and I place another end of a component right here so these two components now this component now this end of that component is connected to this wire because there's an internal vertical line right there and that this red wire then brings that connection to this side and that vertical wire on the back connects it to this component so these two components are now connected in this this particular fashion right here. So that's one resistor connected through the red wire, that's the red wire, and the internal wire, and there's the second resistor coming out. Okay, so uh, for those of you who want electrical schematics, here's the resistor one and resistor two connected in series like that. Okay? So that's one way. So on the breadboard, the power rails are vertically connected. Now, you also see the rails that have a, B, C, D, E columns, and F through J column. So these E, and then you see the rows labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so forth. So the rows are numbered and the columns are lettered. A through E are again vertically connected. And if I look at the back again, peel the back of my breadboard, and I look at it, you'll see this is, what, this is the situation right here. So that's row 1. So that's row 1. A, B, C, D, and E are internally connected by this bar. Same thing on the other side. So there's no connection between E and F because this plastic breaks that connection. In this case, the trench breaks this connection. So A through E of row 1 are all connected together. F through J of row 1 are also all connected together. So, and this bar basically makes that connection. So on 
this side, the power bar, they were vertically connected. This is what, let's call this a component area or the logic area, and those holes uh, are each uh, are internally connected. So if I was making a connection on the component side, if I have, let's say, on row one, column C, that wire right there, and I wanted to make a connection to this guy again. So uh, let's see, I made this kind of connection and this kind of connection right here. So what you see is I have two resistors. So I have basically two resistors. And the first resistor, one side is connected to 9B. 9B. The other end of the resistor is connected to 1C. The other side of the resistor is connected to 1D. And finally, the next one is connected to 7J. So if I was looking at it, this is what it looks like. So 9B, one end, connects to 1C. Row 1, C and D are connected together. So that connection is made internally. And the other end of that resistor is connected to 7J. Okay, So that's how a breadboard really works. So just to summarize, power, red line. Typically, we'll bring in ground on the black line, and we'll build our internal circuits here. This center line breaks the connection so that we can place components like uh, computer chips and ICs like these, and we can independently connect to different feet uh, of that IC. But more about ICs and how to connect them uh, at a later time.